Let's go to Steve-O. Steve in Charleston, South Carolina. What's up, Steve? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can. How are you doing today? Outstanding, man. You're not from the southern United uh, States, are you? What's that? You're not from the southern United States, are you? I'm not originally. Man, you've picked it up. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I, I still talk like a Texan. I'm trying to trying to get it out of there. Hey, so what's up, man? How can I help? Oh, it's kind of the first time I'm ever saying it out loud, so just bear with me for a minute. You got um, it. You got it. So in the beginning part of the relationship between me and my current wife, uh, I was unfaithful. And uh, at one point, I ended up leaving because I accepted the fact that I was never going to tell her and I was just going to hold it in and and just never break her with that. And I just let the guilt make me leave the relationship. Um, later on down the line, I made another selfish act of coming back in um, with the illusion that as long as I am the man that I intend to be and plan to be and want to be for her um, that this could just be a dark secret that gets hidden. And here we are years later and it's uh, eaten away at me. And I've decided it's time that, you know, I confess this to her regardless of which way it goes. Um, and I was just wondering some tips on how I can best convey this to her and support her during this hard conversation. Mm. Um, one, thanks for saying it out loud, man. Thanks for saying it out loud. Thank you. Um, I'm the first person you ever told that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm it reading all came around because of your show too. <laughs> uh, I started listening to you a few weeks ago and, and, uh, it started eating up and eating up and firing up and firing up inside of me. And I, I finally realized that I can't be who I want to be holding this secret in. Yeah. And it's also kept you from being the person you've wanted to be all the time in the past too, right? Just find yourself here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm reading between the lines here. Um, did you cheat on her where you were dating too? Like you, yeah. you let, you didn't leave your it marriage, was, right? It was, per, it was pretty much from, uh, the point where we started dating to, uh, up until I left years ago. Okay. And when you say you left, does that mean you just broke up with her while y'all were dating or you left your marriage? Marriage. Okay. Um, how long have y'all been married? Uh, I mean, since we were 18. Not super helpful because I don't know how old you are now. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> About uh, seven, eight years. Okay. How many times Six, have you cheated seven. on her in eight years? Uh, in the first three, uh, eight times. And then never again after that. So in the first three years, was the same person? No. Tell me about people you're cheating with. Uh, I mean, was it people you work with, girlfriends, people from Craigslist? That's uh, people that on occasion that I went to high school with, um, and then just random people you meet over the internet. Okay. What happened three years ago that you said no more and you've gone five years from, uh, violating your marriage? Uh, I realized that, you know, those actions were part of a, were being selfish of me and, and just kind of feeding into a selfish behavior that I've had for a while. And I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy being selfish. Every bit of it came with guilt, but I couldn't seem to keep myself on the straight path and the illusion of not seeing, not ever having this girl again. And losing the opportunity to have a family with her. Uh, it kind of just made me think that I can hide this secret and continue on the straight and narrow. And it would be like, it never was and never happened. So we'll, here I am. <laughs> well, it's not. we'll get to, how do you tell? 
Okay. There's an important, there's an important way to do that, a right way to do that. And there's a couple of terrible wrong ways to do it. Here's my concern. Your reason for quitting cheating on your wife is still utterly selfish. You have not, you've, you don't want to blow this with her. You want to have a family with her. You want to stop feeling guilty. And what I haven't heard from you is I destroyed the life of somebody that I love. And there's an empathy. There's a submission. There's a taking a knee. While somebody sits above you and saying, I'm sorry because I've just thrown a grenade in everything you think you know. And I don't hear that in you. I may have, I mean, maybe it's the first time I'm saying it because that's what's in my mind. Okay. Is, okay. Uh, that's why, you know, it hasn't occurred again. And that's why I've gotten to the point of feeling as if I need to confess about this because. I, I mean, everything we've built and the person that she thinks she's with is, is wrapped around an entire lie that would change everything from, you know, our whole entire relationship. Okay. So here's, here's kind of the mechanics moving forward. Okay. I want you to think of this. Um, the, the way I was trained to do death notifications by Dr. Andy Young. This guy's a super important man to me. Uh, brilliant man. Gave me the line, facts are your friends when you're having hard conversations. I've also been a part of having to let employees go, um, having to tell people that their kids have passed away. Like, like my whole career has been hard conversations. And I did it wrong for a long time. And until Dr. Young gave me some pretty clear guidance. So I'm going to pass that guidance from him through me on to you, okay? What's about to happen is the death of her life. Okay, you're about to put a period at the end of everything she thinks she knows and there'll be a before and after in her life, okay? Why am I telling you that? I want you to treat it that way. And when you treat it that way, facts are your friends. So here's what that means. Talk way less than you think you need to. The moment you sit down and say, this is a heavy conversation, her heart's going to start beating fast and she's going to have some idea because you did leave at some point, right? Yes. Um, is there any chance she knows about this and has chosen to not think about it? Uh, I think so. I okay. feel as if there's not 100% trust there um, and we're kind of just in a charade yep. that she pretends to believe me. Mm -hmm. Um, because when I came back, she, you know, she hasn't had any inkling. So she chose kind of the forget the past, but that doesn't also give me her full trust. A lot of times people will, Which yeah, completely they, undeserving. <laughs> and, and well, in the same way that you buried part of your life, she's buried part of hers so that we can maintain and just keep heading forward. Mm -hmm. Right. And we think that if we uncover this, it's going to be worse. And what you find out over time is, no, the longer that secret stays buried, the more those secrets are become infected, right? Um, yeah. And then it becomes less about you cheated on me, which is huge. You cheated on me multiple times. You made me unsafe. You slept with people off the internet and made me unsafe. Two, was Christmas even real? Was Thanksgiving, right? So it, 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 be, it begins to erode everything, right? So yeah. um, talk way less than you think. Be very specific and very clear. What do I mean by that? Um, not, um, I just, there were some times when I experienced unfaithfulness. No. When we were dating on seven different occasions, I cheated on you. I had sex with other people. Then we were married the first three years of our marriage. I had sex with eight different people or I had sex with four different people, two times each. I have not slept with anybody else. I've not cheated on you either physically or emotionally in eight years, I mean, five years. Do you see what I'm saying? That's specific. Yep. And then there's a period at the end of that sentence. 
not, and I know it's going to break your heart. And because here's the thing, all the explaining, all of the, she is going to be in full fight or flight, her ability to process and rationally think through and let's talk, that will be over. It will be about survival. Okay. So that's number one. Um, number two, do not lie. Tell all of the truth. Okay. If we're going to go there, let's, sure. let's just go there. Is there a chance that any of these people were her friends or something that's going to be even more explosive on top of the already explosive? No. Uh, okay. Just, nope. Okay. Um, okay, so don't lie. And number three, here's what I did. Here's what I'm doing. And I'm at your mercy now. Okay. She gets to speak into what healing will look like if there's going to be healing. Okay. So here's what I did. I cheated on you, period. Here's what I'm doing now. I haven't done anything for five years. I don't have Facebook anymore. I deleted Instagram because I'm not talking to people on the internet. Here's the steps I've taken. And I, number three, I know I've hurt you deeply. And I know it's going to take time for us to heal. And what I can tell you is I'm sorry and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Okay. And she might say, why, what happened, what was going on? I think it's important in that moment to say, I want to stay in this conversation and not go back yet. I'm sorry. I violated our marriage. I'm sorry. You deserved better than that. And I'm sorry. And I've made steps that it will never happen again, but I know I've got a long way to go. I want you to keep bringing it back to the present, back to the present, back to the present, okay? Okay. Here's the last thing I'll tell you. Uh, I, I, I say we're in the John Wick um, generation of people who watch a lot of movies and they're like, if, dude, if that ever happened to me, you know what I would do? And I always laugh and I'm like, you have no idea what you would do. <laughs> right like if that bad guy came in here and started shooting you know what i would do you, you would probably 98 percent of the world would duck and run and that's not a bad thing you would duck and run right um you you have no idea what her response will be even though you have played it out in your head and i want you to be at peace with the immediate reaction and then understand this is going to unfold for a while okay what that means is this she might say, get out, get out. And I think the wise thing to do would be to stand up and say, I love you. I'm sorry. And maybe you have a letter written and you put it right down there and then you leave. Okay. She may want to talk and talk and talk and talk. I think that's not super wise, but also some people just process that way. Like I said, keep bringing it back to the present, back to the present, back to the present. If you take a break, let's take a 30-minute break. Let's take an hour break, and then we can talk about the past. Um, that may be a wise thing to do. And then you can kind of talk, start talking about other things. But she may tell you to get out, and she may file for divorce Monday. And she may tell you to get out, and she doesn't want to talk to you. She won't return your text, won't return your calls, and then she'll call you back in a week. Or she may say, man, Steve, I knew this. I knew. I knew. And now you'll have some healing to begin, right? Or she may say, I'm not leaving you. You're not getting rid of me, but we've got a lot, right? You see what I'm saying? You have no idea what the response is going to be, even though you think you know it's going to be. Are you at peace with that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's a good answer, actually. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a great it's, answer. It's something that I've accepted that I will have to deal with, you know, because it's the consequence of my actions. Um, okay. So yes and no. Dude, that's some, that's some brave ownership there. Where'd you learn that? Cause that's new for you. Just, uh, I mean, a lot of it probably came from listening to these last few weeks and really reflecting back on my life. Um, and realizing a lot of the hurtful things that I've done that, you know, I can't, can't take back, but can own up to them now and, and move forward being the person that I want to be. It's awesome. I mean, that, that literally is the only step you got, right? Is to own what happened and then move on. Um, do not, don't, 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 please. Right, I'm smiling right now. Don't do this. Don't say, hey, I've been listening to this podcast for the last few weeks <laughs> and I realized I need to tell you something. 
because what that will do is that will diminish the last eight years of deception into, well, this guy I listened to you told me, right? Um, yeah. This will be, and remember what I said earlier, the more you talk about you and what you've been experiencing, it diminishes the apology. It diminishes this moment because this moment's going to be about her. Right, this this coming clean is going to be about her. You're going to benefit from it, right? You're going to walk taller and you're going to sleep deeper than you have in a while, but you might be doing it on a friend's couch. Um, are you prepared for her just to say, get out and file for divorce? Uh, it terrifies me, but of course, you know, I, it's a possibility that, okay. like I said, I just have to accept is a possibility. And what, what do you think she's going to say? I don't know. Um, I have two versions in my mind. The, the, you know, like you said, I knew. Mm -hmm. I didn't fully know, but I know now. And, you know, how do we move forward? And then the (laughs) other is... That's your fantasy response, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then the more (laughs) realism comes down to, you know, maybe not kicking me out, but we need to figure out you know, what the next steps are for this to end. (laughs) I just, you have this like fantasy. She's going to be like, go get some beers and some enchiladas and we're going to talk about this and we'll figure it out. (laughs) Right? Probably not. Hey, we've got a dream. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, uh, I'll tell you this. What you did was stupid and it was selfish and it was hurtful and you know that, right? I agree. Yes, sir. Um, What you're doing now is brave and honest and you're heading off into uncharted water. And um, so I'm not going to applaud you for what you did, but I'm going to applaud you for what you're doing. Okay? Um, yes, sir. That's a brave... I- I'm proud of you. I've come to believe over the last five or six years, especially the last three or four of my own marriage, secrets kill. They destroy everything. And then as I've looked at the physiology and the biology of secrets, they're so destructive. And so I think you're wise. I think you're wise for your personal health, your relationship, if your marriage, and most importantly for that sweet woman that you're married to. Um, also, dude, I make no illusions about relationships have two pe- two players, okay? The time for, yeah, but you, and I'll, that will come in counseling on the back end of this, okay? This will be about you taking ownership of what you've done. Um, have you read my new book? I have not. Okay, hang on the line. I'm going to send you a free copy, okay? And ironically, the name of the book is Own Your Past, Change Your Future, and that's you, right? (laughs) Yes, sir. Like, here's where we are, and I got to own what happened, and then we got to make some plans for moving forward. Um, Will you do me a favor and reach out to me when this, when, when, and let me know how it goes? Yes, sir. I will. Okay. Um, I, you know what? I'm thinking here as, as I'm about to hang up here, but I think it would be wise to hand write a letter and put it in an envelope and seal it. And um, give it to her because she's going to go into fight or flight when you tell her this stuff. And um, when people should the letter be just as like a, just a, basically what I would be saying to her out loud. Nope. It w- this is the letter is more I love you and I screwed up. It's going to be less okay. specific. You don't need to say in the letter I I did I had sex with eight different people. You don't need to say that. Mm-hmm. Say. I understand that it hurts you deeply and I understand that you're going to feel like you're crazy and you're going to feel like the last eight years of your life have been a lie. The last 10 or 12 years of your life have been a lie. And while it all hasn't been a lie, I do understand it. And that you'll go to your grave um, heartbroken that you broke her heart and that you're asking for her forgiveness and you're willing to do what it takes to move forward together. Okay. Um, But there's something tangible about it. And that way she can feel it and see it and read it again and read it again and read it again. It won't be an excuse thing. It won't be a, well, I just did this. None of that. It's going to take full ownership, but it's letting her know I love you. And I'm willing to do what it takes to move forward. Are you willing to do what it takes? I don't put words in your mouth. Yes, sir. Okay. That's that's what I I hear that in your voice. Um, Brother, I'm proud of you. And you got some hard, hard, hard uh, steps to take. And it's going to get way worse before it gets better. Um, but I'm proud of you and you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Uh, holler back at me. Let me know how this conversation goes and we will be thinking about you. Talk way less than you think. Facts are your friends. Do not lie. 
ask her how you can participate in her healing if she'll have you and be prepared for this thing to get way off the rails, way off the rails. 